Hi, I'm Richard, and I'm going to show you how to build an end-to-end -end payment flow using Web Payments SDK. We'll start with the front end and how to capture payment details, and then how to pass those to a back end and process a payment using what we get from the front end. Before we get started, let's go over what a full payment flow consists of and how the data goes from the front end to the back end. The front end is a combination of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript running in a browser. This is where the Web Payments SDK is used to generate tokens that you send to your backend via an AJAX request. The backend is your server-side implementation that would use one of the Square SDKs to process the token that you send. Let's take a look at what the front end looks like. Here we have our Web Payments Quick Start example application. I've already set up my app with my Sandbox Access token, but if you want instructions on how to do that, make sure to follow the readme found in the repo. The example app provides both the front end and the back end. We can find all the front end files in the public folder, while all of our back end files are in the server folder and server.js file. Let's start our app by running npm run dev in the console. Now we can navigate to our browser at localhost with port 3000 to take a look. We can see examples for each payment type for Web Payments SDK, how to handle styling, and strong customer authentication. Let's take a look at the card example. We can see that it says our application and or location ID are incorrect. Let's go set those in our application. We'll go into the public folder, open the examples folder, then we can see a card.html file. Right at the top here, we see there are placeholder strings for the app ID and location ID variables. Let's replace those with my own application ID and location ID. We can save and head back over to the example. Let's refresh the page. Hey, we can see the payment form rendering. I'll put in a test credit card number to test out making a payment. You can find test values for the Web Payments SDK in our docs under Sandbox Test Values. Cool. We see that our payment was successful. Let's go back to check our logs to see what happened. We see some requests have been processed, and it has our successful payment information there. Now that we see this is working, I'll walk through how it works and how the handoff between the front end and back end is working. We've already covered setting our application ID and location ID, so let's scroll down to where we see adding an event listener that is listening for when the DOM is loaded. We just have a check to be sure the Web Payments SDK is loaded, and then we're initializing the SDK here. Then we're initializing the card form using the initialize card function. Let's take a peek at what that function does. This is just awaiting on payments.card and then attaching it to the DOM on an element with the ID of card-container. Now that the card form is initialized, the next step is to create an event listener to know when to try processing the payment details. We can see down here that we are adding a click event listener to our card button element. The event handler function is handle payment method submission and handles the rest of processing the payment details. We're disabling the button temporarily while we process the request. Then we're calling the tokenize function. If we peek at this function, we can see it handles calling tokenize on our payment method, which in this case is a card object and then returns the token. Now that we have a token, all we need to do is send this to our backend using the create payment function. Let's go look at how the create payment function works. So it's just stringifying our location ID along with our token under the key source ID, and then making a post request using fetch to the slash payment endpoint. Then we're just checking the results of that request to show whether it was successful or not. So that covers the front end portion of the payment flow. We initialized the Web Payments SDK, created our card object, attached it to the DOM, listened for a click after a buyer entered their card information, and sent that to our backend. Now we will take a look at what is happening at the slash payment endpoint and how it takes the token we sent to create a payment using the Payments API. Since this is an express application on the backend, we'll want to look at our server.js file. First, we can take a look at the router, which is at the bottom of our file. We can see our slash payment endpoint, which is a post request, and our route handler is the create payment function. Let's follow that to find out how the route handler is working. We're first parsing the JSON from the request. Let's skip down to where we are creating our payment request. We're generating an item potency key, then adding in our location ID and source ID from the payload that we received from the front end. Now just set the amount money to have an amount of 100 cents and our currency is USD. Then, if we were handling a secure card authentication request, we check the verification token. Now we call the create payment method on the payments API and log the results of our request. Since our request is done processing, we can send the results to our front end so it can display whether or not the payment was successful. That covers how the back end works. 
So we've now seen how an end-to-end -end payment flow works. We start with our front end using Web Payments SDK to securely capture the buyer's payment information. Then just send that to our backend for processing. Now, you might be wondering what other payment methods you can accept. Web Payments SDK allows you to take gift cards, digital wallets, and ACH bank transfers in addition to credit and debit cards. To offer these other payment methods, you'd need to modify the front end, but the back end implementation stays the same since it just accepts the token generated from the Web Payments SDK. Let's quickly take a look at ACH to show how the flow remains the same. We can just update our application ID and location ID here, then move on to the functions that are different from the card.html file we looked at earlier. We have an initialize ACH function here that does the same thing as the initialize card function above, but for ACH. Let's skip down to the event listeners. We have a click event listener for ACH that gets our ACH options. Let's take a peek at that function. We can see that it's getting the buyer's name that is on the bank account. Then we're calling the handle payment method submission function that was used for the card. So we see that the flow is pretty much the same here. Let's go look at how this flow looks in the browser. Great, we see the form rendering. Let's test it out. Let's enter some test credentials for getting through the flow. For details on those test credentials, check our docs for the sandbox test credentials or in the description of our video. Awesome, we see that our payment has successfully gone through. Let's go back to our console to see the results. We see that we have a successful payment and that the source type is a bank account. So we know that despite using a different payment method, we can handle it just the same with our backend. That covers handling end-to-end -end payments using Web Payments SDK. We showed how to get the SDK up and running in your front end, how it handles tokenization and communicates with your backend, and then how the backend processes the token it receives. Be sure to check our docs for more examples and information on implementing Web Payments SDK and all the ways you can use it. Happy coding.